Hi everyone, welcome to Physics University. I'm Austin, and today I wanted to be talking about general problem solving tips, things that you can use on your homework and exams to help you get an edge, help you get some more points, and hopefully do better in your classes. Um, so let's just jump right in. Today, uh, the first one we have for you is read and reread the question to understand it fully. Many questions have many parts. You need to fully understand each part before solving a problem. Now, unfortunately, physics has this uh, difficulty of writing a question that has real world context um, that is also short enough, and that's difficult to do. So many questions are a little bit longer to give you that context. You need to really make sure you read it and reread it to make sure you understand it fully so that you have a better chance of actually solving the problem um, if you understand what's going on. Um, some people highlight parts of the question, some people underline, that's totally fine. Whatever helps you make sure that you understand what's going on in the problem. Number two, uh, what is the question asking for in terms of an answer? Is it asking for a number with units? Is it asking for an equation? An equation in terms of variables and not actually plugging numbers in? Um, this is really crucial. And what I recommend is that you actually write what the question is asking for on the side of the page once you figure that out at the beginning. So, hey, I know that I'm looking for a velocity in meters per second. So off to the side of my page, I'm going to write something like V equals question mark meters per second or something to that effect. Just so I know in the end that I'm getting something that the answer wants. If the answer specifically wants an equation and not numbers, then this doesn't, you wouldn't write something like this. You would write V equals A, B, C, dot, 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 some sort of equation based form, okay? Um, this is very crucial. A lot of times people will just assume that I'm looking for a number with units and I'm actually looking for an equation or vice versa. And you just simply don't get the answer right because you didn't do the right thing when you had all the information to do the right thing. Um, so that's crucial. Number three, visualize the scenario and draw a picture if applicable. Label your picture as accurately as you can, including important info for the problem. So sometimes this can be as simple as drawing a free body diagram and labeling it as possible. Um, but really visualize the scenario of what's going on. So, you know, hey, I've got some box on a table. It has some sort of mass and I push down on it with a force and it's going to slide and there's friction and I need to know the distance D that it traveled in some time T or something like that. So just draw a simple picture, make sure you understand and visualize what's going on. That'll help you really understand the math and physics behind what's going on too. Um, and you can relate it back to things you've already covered in class. Um, labeling your picture as accurately as possible is great. It allows you to put down as much information that you know as possible. Um, and that info can help you later in the problem. All right, next. Make a list of knowns and unknowns. Do you know how to solve for those unknowns? Do any equations or processes allow you to solve for knowns and unknowns? Okay, so I just do a simple list like so. Knowns, K, and unknowns, UK. And I just put, hey, I know the mass, I know the time, and I'm solving for the distance. And then from here, this hopefully allows you to think of some processes or some problems you've done in the past or equations you've used in the past that relate these knowns and unknowns to help you solve for what you're looking to solve for. Um, this is really helpful to get you organized for success in your problem. And then after that, start solving for what you can. Hopefully that will lead you to know more things that let you solve for more unknowns and so on. So say that you can use the mass and the time and that leads you to get to the distance. And then once you have the distance, you can use mass, time, and the distance to get, say, the force out or something like that. Solving for one of the things that you don't know can give you more information on the problem to solve for another thing you don't know, and so on. That's typically what happens in these problems. Okay, after that, check for any ways to simplify the algebra. Most mistakes that we get when we're grading are from algebraic mistakes where the physics is set up correctly. You've done the right equations. You've looked at the free body diagram correctly, what have you. Um, but the actual simplification of the algebra and algebraic maneuvering uh, has some issues and that leads to an error in your answer. Um, so just recheck your algebra, check what's going on, make sure there's no um, mistakes that you made um, that'll, that'll save you a lot of points. All right, 
a huge one, a huge one. Before plugging in numbers into your equation, use the sense-making techniques, linked in the description below, we have a video on that, to see if your equation is a reasonable equation. Check the units and dimensions, check limiting cases, check proportionality, right? Do all of these checks um, that we can see if our answer, our equation alone is a reasonable equation, and then you can plug in your numbers, okay? So, hey, I know that I'm going to have some equation. Um, we'll use the equation that we used in the sense-making video of square root of r over m1, m2g minus a buoyancy force, okay? I check the units of these to make sure that I get units of velocity out. I check proportionality that says, hey, what happens if I increase the force? Does the velocity increase like I expect it to, et cetera? Um, doing all of those things before you plug in numbers can give you a sense of whether you're on the right track or not. Okay. And then finally, once you're done with all that, plug in a value, right? And say, hey, I got the velocity of 2000 meters per second. Okay, I know that I wanted to get velocity equals some sort of question mark number of meters per second. Great, I got that. But does my answer actually make sense? Is it a reasonable answer using the sense-making techniques that we've learned before? Order of magnitude would be a great one here. Um, 2,000 meters per second is really high. That's like rocket ship speeds. Um, so I would guess for most problems, is unless you're dealing with a rocket ship, this might be too big. So go back and check your work, see what's wrong, and see um, whether or not you made a mistake. And if not, then great. Uh, you can say, hey, my answer seems reasonable because of the sense-making techniques. And then and there you go. That looks great for the grader. Okay. So again, just walk through your problem. Make sure you get a full understanding of your problem. Draw some pictures. Draw some diagrams. List your knowns and unknowns. We basically want you to just be as organized as possible. Know as much as you can know. And, and use that info to solve the problem later on, okay? And then check your answer using sense-making techniques before you plug numbers in, and then use more sense-making techniques after you plug your numbers in to see whether or not you have a reasonable answer. Um, cool. All right, so let me know in the comments below whether this helped you or not, uh, what other types of videos you'd like to see from us. Um, we have been Physics University. Thanks for watching.